Hey, it's Nardwar, the human serviette at Camp Flogna, about to interview Biba Doobie. Who are you? I am Biba Doobie. Biba Doobie, welcome to Camp Flogna. Thank you. Right off the bat, Biba Doobie, I have a gift for you. A Daniel Johnson double LP. Awesome. Thank you so much. From 1990. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. With Artistic Vice and 1990, what can you say about Daniel Johnson? Um, he's a big inspiration to mine. I actually have his... Tattoo? <laughs> Yeah, Devil Tams, my favorite song. Can we see the tattoo? Um, here it is. It's the eye bat. <laughs> I just love his writing. I feel like he's one of the most like genuine, like vulnerable artists, and he's just awesome. Yeah, really awesome. And that is to welcome you a gift to Camp Flogna. Thanks. That's awesome. Thursday, April twelfth, two thousand eighteen. Late night honeymoon. Oh, my first show. What? Roast time? Oh my goodness, yeah, my first show. Pig? Oh God, yeah, my first, that was my first ever show I ever did. And Biba? Doobie. At the Boiler Room in Guilford. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. What do you remember about that? I remember being really nervous and I remember like not knowing how to stand on stage. Every time I like held an acoustic guitar, my feet were like awkwardly separated from each other that was a wild time yeah no pig was also on the bill pig oscar yeah oscar yeah he's great what can you see about oscar the moon song oh he's a dear friend of mine he's um he's a really talented musician and he like did all my kind of first music um recorded all my first tunes so yeah like your first cassette he helped to record that yeah um yeah he recorded like the first ep he actually he did help me record a cassette tape, yeah, once. And he got you online. Exactly, he put me on Spotify. He put me under this like random, because he had to like go through like a label to like release music on Spotify. So he just made a label called The Farmhouse. And then we released music through that, yeah. Is it still there? I have no idea, I think, I don't know. I have no idea. What name would have you chosen? What, for the, I have no idea. Honestly, I don't trust myself with names because my name's Biba Doobie. So. <laughs> and Biba Doobie, I have another gift for you from Expo 74 in Spokane, the music of the Philippines. Wow, thank you. From the Philippine Pavilion. Oh, wow, this is awesome. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. And produced by Pan Am Airlines. What? <laughs> Why is it produced by an airline? Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that is wild. Oh, um, thank you so much. My parents are going to be really happy. Like you have enjoyed producers before, but never Not an air airline. Not an airline. That is a first. What would you imagine an airline being as a producer? What would they demand you to do versus a regular producer? I have, you know what? I think they'd think outside the box. I feel like they'd. I think it'd be really interesting. I'm really intrigued by this record. Thank you. But they would kind of be strict, wouldn't they? Like they'd make you keep to your seat. They'd force in-flight entertainment on you. But we don't know about Pan Am Airlines. Like most airlines, yes, but who knows about Pan Am? Okay, they could be. They could be crazy. They could be an awesome airline. The Filipino connection. Yes, thank you so much. They even got. They're wearing the Filipinianas. That yeah, they look sick. Thank you. No problem. What about Filipino soap operas? <laughs> Yeah, Telesarius. Yeah, love them. What are they like? Um, Mental. I think there was one called, like, there was loads I used to watch, like, Ma'ala Ala Mokaya, like, Akobodoi, like, loads. There was a bunch. Could now you get on them? What, be in them? Yeah. Could be 
being them. I I mean I can't act, so I don't think I don't think I'd I'd be well suited for them, unfortunately. SM City Mall. <laughs> yeah, love SM. I love. That's in the Philippines, right? Yeah. Can you explain a bit about that mall? Um, it's kind of crazy. It's just like a like Filipinos love malls because there's like air conditioning in there. There's like a little fairground inside the actual mall. It's cute. It's cute. Ube. Cake. Ube cake. I love ube cake. Or oh, ube ice cream. Really tasty. I have a gift for you. An original John Lennon, if you could open that up. Doll. <laughs> That's awesome. Thing. From 1964. No. Yes. If you look at the bottom, it says NIMS, which is Brian Epstein's company. Oh, my goodness. This is mental. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I love the Beatles. John was my favorite. Thank you. And his hair has been so good for so many years. Yeah, that is crazy. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you. Oh, sure, no problem, because you are a Biba. Doobie. <laughs> and Biba Doobie, here we are at Camp Blogna. You are here playing. Yes. With, but not alone. With my band. Oh, my God. Could you please band. introduce them? Yes, of course. This is Jacob, Eliana, and Luca. As part of the? Biba Doobie Band. And Jacob, why don't you come up here for a second? What can you say about Jacob? Um, Jacob, um, Jacob is, he's, he's a good friend of mine. He's, we're making an album together. And Jacob, what can you say about Biba Doobie? She's the best. She's my friend. She's a legend. And I have a gift for Jacob right here. A switched on Moog record. Wow. Because I know you love organs. I do love organs. What can you say about the Moog organ? I guess we've used a lot of organs on our record. Yeah. So switched on back for you. Look at that Moog that you could experiment with. This is beautiful. I'd love one of those. I'd love to play with one of those Moog organs. Yeah, and what's it like to play with Biba Doobie? I understand she wanted to shave your head? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like one time we have, I have shaved his head. You have shaved my head before, yeah. I used yeah. to have a shaved head. Yeah. Because, yeah, quote, be envisioned a shaved head in a band. Oh, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was hired for my haircut originally. Yeah. Not about his guitar yeah. playing. Just the haircut. Narcissus Studio. Yeah, the best. The home. The Stripes. The, the band. The, wow, yeah, the Stripes. <laughs> well, you've been digging, fucking hell. Yeah, I know. The you are part of the BB Doobie band. We have to know. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the homies. We also have other members of your band. Um, maybe they could come forward, too. Yeah, Eliana. We could. And who do we have right again? Could we reintroduce them? This is Eliana, and this is Luca. Hey. Hello. And what can you say, Eliana, about Biba Doobie? Um, I've known her for a while now, since we were teenagers. Um, and, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of her. I'm proud of all the stuff that she's done. It's, but yeah, things were a bit crazy at first, but in the best way. And what can you say about Eliana? She's awesome. She makes me laugh all the time. Love Eliana. She's my homie. And we also have Luca. Hello, this is me. And what can you say about Biba Doobie? Uh, amazing to be around. I love her music. It's it's probably the best <laughs> drumming music. This is his first time meeting her, yeah. actually. This is this is my this is my first day, guys. Yeah. And what can see about Luca? Yeah, he's awesome. He's, he's Italian and he's got really tasty pasta dishes. <laughs> yeah, she does. Yeah, the cooking is it. It kind of got me this job. Yeah, yeah the cooking. And your grandfather did some set design for David Bowie. What the <laughs> fuck? Wow. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, back in the seventies. Yeah, Ashes to Ashes. He's. I hope he watches this because uh, he'll he'll be very he'll love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible, the Biba Doobie link to David Bowie. Yeah, it's awesome. That is awesome. Eliana, your dad likes Paul Weller? Yes, he's a big Weller fan. Um, he's met him a few times. I don't really know how. I don't, I don't not in a stalkery way, but um, yeah, big Weller fan. Yeah. 
And was B gonna shave your head as well? God, I don't. Why are you? I cut. I cut your hair at one He's, point. Yeah. I feel like she shaved this. Did you shave the sides of my head at one point? I think. Oh, I shaved the sides of your head. Yeah. But did she want shaved heads all around in a band? Did she want to shave your head? I've always wanted you to have a pixie cut, yeah. not well, shaved. Yeah. We will probably have some sort of mental breakdown at some point and both shave our heads. But that was quite a while ago, and we're still staying strong. So that's not happened yet. Yeah. <laughs> So you're happy with the look of the band. Love the look. There's no more hairstyling. No more shaved hands. I'm fine with that. And we're all excited to play camp. Vlog. And do 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 do. Do do. do. People do. I have another gift for you. An original 1968 Velvet Underground postcard. That is so awesome. From the Velvet Underground playing in Vancouver, Canada. It's got a postcard so you can mail it back home if you oh, want to. Yeah. Write something on the back. At, on that gig, John Cale broke his wrist. He fell off the stage in Vancouver. But this is an original postcard from 1968 of Velvet Underground. And you love the Underground, don't you? Yeah, I love Velvet Underground. This is incredible. Thank you so much. It's so gorgeous. Sure, no problem. How did you get into the Underground? Um. I had like a group of friends at home, like from school, and they showed me loads of incredible music. And I think my friend Tara showed me the Velvet Underground. Yeah, great band. Camden Market. I love Camden Market, yes. Have you ever gone there for e shisha pens? Oh, God, yeah. When I was in year nine, yeah. Shisha pens, that was a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain that experience? Um, it was weird. Um, I think there was like loads of phases in school where everybody like wanted to wear contacts and then like, like French braids were a thing and then shisha pens were a thing. And yeah, it was a trend somehow in high school. What about Beast Closet? That's an amazing Instagram account, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I love that Instagram account. It's quite useful, isn't it? Like you can tell what you wear? No, totally. Or like every time I feel like indecisive about what to wear i go onto that actual account i'm like okay i'll wear that outfit i wore two weeks ago <laughs> yeah and what about other people did they look at that and bring you different gifts relating to that <laughs> i think people can tell my taste quite clearly when they look at that account so yeah it does tend to help Beba Doobie, here we are finally winding up at camp flogna anything else you want to add to the people out there at all um i can't wait to play and Thanks for this interview. It's awesome. Why should people care about Biba Doobie? Why should people care? Um, because I really care <laughs> about making music. Yeah, maybe that's... I mean, I don't really care if you don't want to care, but I really care. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much, Biba Doobie. Keep on rocking in the free world and do 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 Yeah. Nice. Wow, you're like really still. You're not even ticklish. Just a little sweaty. <laughs> so I'm just gonna walk out. We were awesome, guys.